every culture in the world has its own folklore. And within folklore, there are always nuggets of truth. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, as always, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. If you would like to join our Patreon and help support this channel, there are links down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta, and today on Mystery Monday, we are gonna be talking about the legend of the Mass of St. Sicaire. So I know on Friday I told you guys that your Monday video would be shot on the old camera, however, I am attempting to shoot this with the new camera. You might notice that I'm a little bit lower than I normally am. We're still trying to figure out the lights and how to position this camera and all that jazz. But I hope that the picture is better, I hope that my face is facing you. I know that was a big complaint with the old camera that it couldn't quite get the angle of my face. Otherwise, please be patient with us as we try to figure out what, what works best for this camera with the lights, with the set, all that boring background stuff that happens when you run a YouTube channel. But nonetheless, thank you all for your patience as we learn and grow on this channel. All right. Let's get started with today's mystery and legend coming from France. In 1890, Sir James Fraser released a book called The Golden Bough. Now this book really started to develop over time, especially from its original release date. Now there's multiple volumes of Sir James Fraser's work. Now Sir James Fraser was known for his um, academics and his scholarship on things like magic and folklore and spirituality. And in fact, there are many people that believe Sir James Fraser is one of the most important scholars who ever lived. His book, The Golden Bow, is still in print over a hundred years later. In The Golden Bow, one of Fraser's topics is this idea of a thought process, why we believe the things we believe and how they evolve over time. He had this theory of magic then evolving into religion, which then eventually turns into science. Now, those who have been a part of this channel for a while know that our ancient ancestors did not separate religion from science. The separation of religion and science is more of a modern perspective on the world around us. I personally believe that our ancestors knew a thing or two that we don't know and that religion and science do go hand in hand. God is science and science is God. Now from what I understand, one of the biggest differences between magic and religion, according to Sir James Fraser, was that magic was something that someone participated in when they wanted to control the elements or control the world around them. Whereas religion was a form of spiritual practice someone engaged in when they wanted to learn how to accept the world around them. Now this concept isn't new to me. We know that in the world of spirituality there are white lights and dark lights, angels and demon God, Satan. There's this dichotomy that's happening not just on the earthly realm, on our plane of existence, but in the heavens as well. And I have studied before that a type of black magic is when you try to change nature. And a type of white magic or light bearing spirituality is when you learn to work with nature, to surrender to God's will. And as we dive deeper into the concept of black mass in this total inversion, 
from the Catholic Mass, we do start to look at these opposing forces of this same idea of a spiritual practice, but for two different reasons. One service to self in the dark or negative side, and one service to others in accepting of divine's will on the light side or the side of God. Well, in James Fraser's book, The Golden Bow, he speaks about a legend that came from France called the Mass of Saint Sicaire. Now, this was one of the most potent black masses that I have ever heard of. But the thing is, is Sir James Fraser wasn't the first one first scholar to write about this particular legend of this particular mass. In fact, Sir James Fraser quotes Jean-Francois Blade in his work on studying the folklore around this mass. By the way, I really hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, again, I'm not French, so I apologize if I did not say the French dude's name right. Now, the legends of this mass originated in Gascony, France, which is right on the southwestern side of France, close to the Pyrenees on the Atlantic coast. This area is known as the Tuscany of France, and as I was researching this story, oh my gosh, what a beautiful part of the world. I really hope to be able to go there one day and see this magnificent area. Now, the terrifying legend of this Black Mass started in the Middle Ages. It was rumored amongst the farmers in the area that if you wanted to get even with your enemy, then you would perform this particular Black Mass. Now, as I've stated on this channel many, many times, I myself grew up Presbyterian. I come from a background of Protestants. Yes, my niece and my nephew are being raised Catholic, and I am my nephew's godmother. However, because I was not raised in the Catholic faith, there are a lot of things that I might miss in regards to these stories. But from what I understand, and, and this is a theory I had heard before, is that when one enters the priesthood, this is dating back from the very beginning. And of course, in the Middle Ages, there was no Protestant faith yet. That was still to come. So everybody in the European world was a form of a, of a Catholic faith. Well, when the priest would go to priest school, to seminary school, to learn how to be a, a priest, they were taught the ways of a magician or a wizard. They learned how to invoke certain spiritual forces. I, I do believe this because I do believe that man is capable of a lot more than we've been taught. And I do believe that the powers that be try to separate us and keep the masses dumbed down to their full potential. Now, of course, whether you use your techniques of spiritual attunement, positive or negative, is totally up to you. As we know, there are good priests who have a heart of gold that really want to serve humanity. And as we know, too, there are obviously very, very bad priests who do really bad things. You see, this power of good and evil within the Catholic Church is almost two sides of the same coin, this, this massive dichotomy. Again, we know Vatican means the head of a serpent, and we know that there's a Lucifer room directly under the Vatican as well, and as we know, the Pope we have now, and most of the Popes, have pretty much been service to self. Well, within the recorded information we have about this legendary mass, it is said that this is one of the most dangerous black masses that anybody can perform. And in fact, in some of these sources, they call the priest performing this mass a magician. It is claimed in some sources that a lot of priests do know how to perform this mass, but most won't because it's so evil that most priests 
prefer to stay as far away from this mass as humanly possible. And as it said in one of the sources, no gold, money, or fame would ever tempt them into performing this mass. That's how evil this whole thing is. This also makes a lot of sense. If you guys can remember from our Friday video, Catherine would hire priests to perform the black masses for the French royal court during Louis XIV's reign. So they're definitely going to priests for these black masses. It's not like they're, there's like a Satan school down the street that they can go get a priest from the Satan school. No, they're going to the priest in the Catholic Church and bribing them with money to perform these horrifically evil task. It is said in these sources that only the most evil of all the priests would be willing to perform these masses. And because these masses were so potent and so evil, these priests could not stay in the same town for more than two days. Because if they were caught performing these masses, then the priests themselves would be executed. Now let's say a farmer out in this area in the Middle Ages had an enemy, another farmer that they wanted to get rid of. They would go and find one of these wickedly evil priests to perform these black masses to cast a spell on their enemy. Once they found the priest that was willing to do it, of course the farmer would have to pay a lot of money for the priest to perform this curse on their sworn enemies. Well, then they would have to find an abandoned church. And this abandoned church couldn't just be like any old abandoned church. There had to be some ruin to it, some destruction done to the property. Of course, there had to be bats and owls that lived in the church because why not? And under the altar, the person hiring the priest was responsible for placing a bunch of live toads. Now, before the official mass would start, the priest would have to enter into this church with his lover, his mistress, who also had to work as a prostitute. And alone together, the two of them would eat a dinner. Once the clock struck 11 o'clock, the ceremony would begin. This is 11 o'clock in the evening, of course. It wouldn't be in the middle of the day, it would be in the evening. At that point, the priest would start to recite a mass backwards. During the communion portion of the mask, the priest would eat uh, wafers, the communion wafers, and in the Catholic Church, they're usually round circular wafers, but in this black mass, they were black and triangles. And instead of consecrated wine, the priest would drink water from a well where an unbaptized baby had been drowned. During the Mass, the priest would also draw a cross on the ground with his left foot. And by the time the clock strikes midnight, they have to then start to chant the name of the victim. Now, once the mass was over, it was believed that the victim would get really, really sick and would start to wither away and die a long and agonizing death that doctors could not diagnose. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with this victim. Now, it is written that there is a counter mass to this mass where you can reverse the curse and put it back on the priest and the person who paid for the mass. However, most of the sources didn't didn't write down what that counter mass actually was. Now again, the title of this mass was the Mass of Saint Sacre. This is a very particular style of black mass. Now the interesting thing is, as I did my research, I couldn't figure out who Sacre was, or if Sacre was a real person, like a lot of the saints that are within the Catholic faith. I even got onto DuckDuckGo and some of these um, better search engines where there's not a lot of censorship. And even though I could find more about this mass on DuckDuckGo, I still could not find any origins for who this mass is named for. So that within itself is a mystery. Part of me believes that it might be named after potentially the first priest to allegedly do this mass, or maybe it's the name of some demon that somebody channeled at one point. I have no 
idea, and it seems a lot of people have no idea either where the name came from. Or it could just be a name that evolved over time within this legend. Now, within my research, I couldn't find any actual eyewitness accounts from the Middle Ages to have witnessed any of these masses. And of course, we know that legends snowball on themselves and grow and become wilder and wilder and wilder as time passes. We also have to remember that with the Middle Ages, we are coming out of the Dark Ages. And I'm sure there were a lot of times where people would get really, really sick and doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. And so maybe that's where the legend came from, that they would just accuse it and, and say the reason for this death was because somebody put a hex on them or used this black mass to curse them. However, I'm not so sure. As I've said throughout my research, the French people, especially the royals, have been a lot more open about um, their authority figures participating in these types of religious ceremonies, way more open than my English background. So in my opinion, this folklore had to start somewhere. As I said in the opening, most folklore has a nugget of truth in it. Is there a black mass that somebody witnessed at one time in this area and did that story evolve over time and become the catalyst for anything unexplained that happened to particular people? Or is it all just simply legend? And even scarier, if it's not legend, is it still going on today? Let me know your thoughts down in the description box below. Have you heard of this black mass? And if you haven't, what do you think? Also, do you know of any other spooky legends about a black mass, maybe in New Orleans that you would like me to cover? All right, guys, thank you once again for being super patient with us as we try to work out this new camera. Um, again, as this channel grows, hopefully the equipment will get better and better and better, and the quality of production will get even better. Once again, thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase our opening song, as always, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you so much to Todd Broderick for helping me get this video out to you guys today and being very patient as you explain the new camera to me. Also, if you guys want to check out Todd's band, The Flying Mystics, there is a link to their channel down in the description box too. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week ahead, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.